So thank you again, everybody. This is an introduction to Advanced Marketplace for, for those of you who we, uh, we are new to, and uh, more importantly, it's a, a presentation demo of the new release of Shareable Service Management version 8. <clears throat> we'll have just a few slides to, as an introduction, and then we're going to jump right into product pretty quickly today because we have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with our company, Advanced Marketplace, we've been in business for 19 years. We grew up in the IT service management space, been consulting in ITSM and ITIL for all of those years, have a lot of expertise there, and Shareable, as you will see, is a, an extremely strategic part of everything that we do that's ITSM. Uh, in 2014, we were recognized by Forrester Research as one of the top IT service management companies in all of North America. Uh, we were particularly recognized for a, the focus we have on helping organizations migrate from, strat uh, from legacy technology, legacy ITSM solutions, onto uh, more future-forward ITSM solutions. Specifically with our relationship with Sharewell, as I mentioned, we, it, it is probably uh, one of our most strategic relationships. We are deeply involved in um, the product in all facets with Sharewell. So we're part of the partner advisory board. We're part of the beta testing team for upcoming uh, versions. So a lot of our team, before the newer versions even hit the market, a lot of our team are familiar with the, the products and the new features and enhancements that come out to them. Uh, we also have a number of uh, offerings that are offered directly and in conjunction with uh, Sharewell. Uh, those include some of the ones you see there today. We have a specific migration offering for BMC Footprints customers as well as one for ServiceNow customers who are wanting to move to Sharewell. Um, so for those of you who are new to Sharewell, uh, for those of you who are existing customers, please bear with us just another slide or two until we get to the demo. Uh, but for those of you who are not familiar or are new to Sharewell, uh, Sharewell is an all-inclusive product. It comes with 11 pink verified ITIL processes out of the box. That is the inner ring of the slide that you're looking at. But it's a very extensible platform uh, that allows you to create uh, and build your own functionality. It also works on a, co a concept of what's called mergeable apps, which we'll talk about more, that allow you to build uh, applications on top of the Sharewell platform and extend the functionality beyond uh, what comes out of the box. A couple of notes for those of you, again, who are new to Sharewell, not our existing users who probably already get this. Um, we feel very strongly that there's some things that make Sharewell unique in the industry. Uh, and, and so those are represented by the slide, in particular, the architecture. The architecture of Sharewell is one that, for anyone who's been on a legacy system or worked with it before, you know that the more you configure and tailor and customize the solution, the more difficult upgrades are gonna be. The more you try to get outside of IT, the more challenging it's gonna be. And eventually, you can end up in a, with a roadblock or a very expensive upgrade. Sharewell's architecture is built so that that is not the case. Upgrades always remain simple, uh, always straightforward. And in fact, in version 8, that architecture even improves on uh, the delivery of new features coming into an upgrade. And uh, Mary Lynn Lawrence is joining us. Uh, we'll talk some about that. Sharewell is a codeless configuration platform, and the important thing to note there is that uh, codeless does not mean limiting. Uh, the platform is extremely extensible. We've done many, many, many Sharewell implementations and have never uh, had something we couldn't perform while using the, uh, the codeless tools that come in the Sharewell out of box. So the great news is there's no dependency on Java, Jelly, .NET, HTML, uh, so you really get to manage the cost of it. You don't need expensive developers to work on the solution. You don't need super crazy training on it. You don't necessarily need to have expensive consulting companies. You can start to drive a lot of that functionality from uh, your, your users, your everyday users of the Sharewell uh, system. It comes with a native mobile platform for, uh, for Windows Mobile, iOS, and Android, so very flexible. Uh, it's an all, I mentioned it's all-inclusive pricing. They have a very simple, straightforward, concurrent user 
pricing model. One of the key pieces of ShareWell is it's portable. And what I mean by that is it is the exact same product whether you want to run in the cloud or whether you want to run on-prem. So unlike other vendors who may choose you, make you choose between two different products or may say we only offer this, this flavor of it, uh, you can have your choice with, with ShareWell. And if you, that decision changes with the business requirements change down the road, you can just as easily move from, say, on-premise to cloud or vice versa. Uh, ShareWell is a U.S.-based company. Development support all, uh, all occurs here in the U.S. They are headquartered out of Colorado Springs. So last, uh, last slide, and then we're going to jump right into the demo, is to really kind of cover uh, what we can cover today in, in about 45 minutes of time, and that's the, the area on the left, today's agenda. What we're going to do is we, we do have a mixed audience of folks who are existing ShareWell users who are, I'm sure, wanting to hear what's new and what's different in ShareWell 8. And we have uh, folks who are new to ShareWell who are probably wanting to see more of just the look and feel of the product. So we're going to do a combination of both. We're going to show the application. And then Mary Lynn Lawrence is going to be doing the demo. She will highlight the specific areas where there have been uh, improvements, enhancements uh, inside version 8 for our existing customer base as well. So we're going to start on the end user side with the portal. We'll work through entering some tickets from the portal, take a look at catalog, knowledge management, and then we'll get over on the technician side. And just for the sake of time today, we'll spend some time with the dashboards and incident management and um, request management. And Marilyn's going to spend some time talking about orchestration and some of the in new enhancements around automation inside the system. Areas that we just won't have the time to more than likely get into today are those areas for the deeper dive. So if anyone has a specific interest in wanting to do a deeper dive in some of those other areas there, certainly reach out to our contact information there on the right. Let us know. We can schedule a one-on-one -on -one demo. I think at the end of the demo, we actually have a poll question where we, we ask for topics that people would like to see in an upcoming demo. And so perhaps the next one that we have, the next webinar we have, may be a topic that you have an interest in seeing. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mary Lynn Lawrence. Mary Lynn runs our services team. All of our ShareWell consultants report up to her. She's very, uh, very well versed on the ShareWell product, and she's going to be running us through our demo today. So Mary Lynn, if you can unmute your phone and share your screen, you should be good to go. There we go. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. <laughs> There were two 813 numbers on here, and I picked the wrong one. So let me go ahead and share my uh, desktop here. And we're actually going to start in a, in a kind of an unusual place um, for a demo, but I, I think it's going to be really important given that we have um, you know, both existing and um, new people on the call. So I'm actually going to start at the help server. Now, can you guys see this um, on my screen? Yes, Marilyn, we can see it. All right, great. So the reason I wanted to come here is because um, this is available to anybody, including new customers who don't even own ShareWell. And it's got a wealth of uh, information in it, and I just want to hit a couple of areas that we're going to be talking about today. So you can see this link up here. For those of you that are in 702, just replace the 702 with 8.0 in the, in the ShareWell support link, and it brings you out to here. For, your, for new customers, this is a great place to just sort of tour around a little bit and um, get the latest information on the different versions and the different um, areas within ShareWell. So um, as, as an example here, I have um, areas where it shows what's new in ShareWell 8.0, uh, out, out of box content that's new, the portal, um, some dashboards, some specific forms. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about some of the maps. I'm not going to be able to hit all of them, but I do want to um, hit a couple of them, um, as, especially the automation areas. And then um, for those of you who want to understand a little bit about ShareWell in general, you can see here that there's an essentials area, and it takes you through. Uh, you can get a listing of all of the different business processes that are available uh, in the application. Uh, it talks about all of the different clients that are also available. 
So um, what I would like to do is start at the uh, end user portal. And let's go over to that area first. So this is the new out-of-box um, portal with 8.0. Um, it looks pretty different from for those of you that are on a different um, version. Um, and it has a, a, a really nice look and feel compared to what you had seen before. Um, now, you're not stuck with this view either. I mean, it's, it's nice and progressive, has nice colors. But understand, uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with ShareWell, and, and maybe those of you that are familiar with ShareWell but haven't seen the flexibility of the portal, this can all change very easily. So um, the, the skins, the colors, and, and, and Kara, who's uh, the chairperson for this, is a web designer who works with us and um, comes up with really good ideas that present your organizational theme and um, mode as the end user portal um, front. So just as an example, we have um, one that looks very different. This is the Advanced Marketplace Hub. Um, this is our example of an enterprise service management view of a portal where uh, you, know, you view your organization um, as all of the different areas that an end user needs to get help and uh, fulfillment from. Um, but it comes into one portal, but each of these different areas, in this case HR and facilities and IT, can have a different look and feel and different things that are important to them. So as you can see, this looks very, very different from the view that you were seeing out here. But any of the configuration that was done was done using um, ShareWall configuration, we create an M app and put it down on top. It's not invasive to an upgrade. So that's just a little bit about the, the flexibility of the portal side of things. Um, so let's dive down in here a little bit. So right away you see that the portal presents you with some very um, easy to grab things that are important to you. Now I'm logged in as Tracy, and it is giving me the listing of my requests, notices, and watched areas. If I click on my request, it quickly brings back a listing for me of the different requests that are, that are in process, in flight for me. And as, as you all know, uh, it's extremely important to be able to get status to an end user to keep down the calls for, uh, at your service desk for where's my ticket, you know, what's happening with it. So I'll just give you an example of uh, some of the information that, you can be, that can be made available. Again, for existing ShareWell customers, you may not have known that you can take advantage of just adding additional tabs over here to the view um, to be able to provide more detailed information to an end user. So this is a new employee setup request that I've opened. You can see I have comments going back and forth. Tracy is my, my end user here. Um, we've got Henry, who's the technician, and they're communicating back and forth through the ticket. All of this is tracked in the ticket. And here I see that I have different uh, fields that have been captured from the request, and I can see what I actually ordered. You can also see the tasks that have been assigned. And if I dig down in, I can get a little bit of additional information. And you can decide how much you want your end users to see. Maybe you only want them to see the title and um, you know, just who, who it's owned by but you can expose as much or as little as you want. But providing this information specifically around the tasks and any comments going back and forth uh, is hopefully gonna cut down on the where is my ticket kind of call. You also have who owns the ticket from an overall perspective, and a target SLA is also shown. If I go back out, I see notices. It's really nice. Um, from an end user perspective to be able to get hold of the things that have been identified as important. So notices in this case are uh, problem tickets that have a workaround. Um, and that's really important as well. As the problem's being worked, if there's information that's valuable to the end user, you're able to provide that to them in a view here. The other part of this that, that makes it even more um, effective is they look at this and they say, wow, you know, I was trying to print there today and I just couldn't get there. I'm gonna try this workaround, but I wanna be part of the chain um, for when this problem is resolved. So 
So I clicked on Affects Me Too, and it opens up an incident for me. It's linked it to this problem. And so as that problem goes through its life cycle, I'm going to be part of the notification uh, of the resolution. I have watched issues as well, another uh, nice feature. Um, this is where mine would go when I, here's my affects me too. And so now I can go keep an eye on the tickets that I have clicked on there. I don't want to go through all of these different areas, but um, just want to make sure that we hit, at least at a high level, some of the, the key areas. Uh, I, I assume that you're going to assume that ShareWell has a powerful um, knowledge um, knowledge search engine and capability to workflow. This is just an example of a ticket that has been published to the portal. It's gone through a workflow of review, um, technical review, management review, um, and then a, a final review to have it published. So this knowledge is checked as visible in the portal. There's a whole bunch of other articles that are not visible in the portal and you're not going to see them in your listing. You can have um, screenshots, um, hot links, and you can also have attachments. And if there was an attachment here, they would be listed up here under the paperclip. Um, at the core, underneath, one of the, the core concepts of um, the, the portal as well as the tool in general is the service catalog. So I want to take you into that a little bit. Um, so here's the service catalog. It has lots of different ways that you can present this. Now this is a service catalog view that shows service category and subcategory. It's exposing all of the different areas to the end user. Sorry about that. I could have gone bigger screen. Um, over in our hub example, what we've chosen to do is instead of um, showing all of the service catalog, we've limited it based on maybe the top six kinds of things that are the most frequently requested or reported issues or requests, and have those automatically mapped to the service catalog in the background. And then if they can't find what they want, they can click on other, in this case this is an HR side of it, um, to see only the HR limited view of the catalog. So you have different ways of rendering this catalog. I'm just using this example um, here that's the out-of-box one. One of the most common questions that comes up and, and, and pain points for a lot of the inter other enterprise tool suites that we're familiar with is the maintenance of the service catalog. So you can see I have, uh, again, it's service, category, subcategory. I'm going to take you just uh, quickly over to the technician view. So I'm leaving the end user side. And you know, Bill had mentioned that we're not going to do um, admin, much admin in here. But the really nice thing about the, the ShareWell product suite is that a lot of the areas that have traditionally been hardcore admin, which shouldn't have been hardcore admin, like maintain my service catalog, have been pulled out into a table management function in the regular technician view. And so by, by granting um, security rights, you can, have, um, you can push down some of the key day-to-day uh, -day operational kinds of um, management of supporting tables to um, just, just some other key people and not tie your admins up in it. So in this case, I've got my whole service cat catalog here as a table. And so you can see that I've got my service here, my category, subcategory. I'm just going to go into one of them and show you how easy this is. So here's the three levels. I can decide at this point whether I wanted to open up a service request or an incident ticket. They're the same object within the ShareWell tool, but because you can segment them like this, you can have a different automation processes, different SLAs, different reporting go against that segmentation. Simply by checking this, I can decide whether it's shown on the portal. And this is where my auto routing happens. So um, if something comes in from the portal or from a phone call, when you go down through your classification of your, your category and, and subcategory and service, you can say that you want it to default to a team. So um, table management or the service catalog management is truly as simple as managing a table. 
So let me take you back out here. Um, another very important concept within ShareWell is the idea of a specific form. And so I clicked on New Employee Setup, and I get this form. And this form is going to look very different from if I was requesting a conference telephone. Um, it, this has fields that are specific for the fulfillment of this category structure. So uh, I'm not going to fill this out right now because I already have one filled out. I'm going to show you when we go into the technician view. But um, well, I'll just fill out part of it. Um, one of the other things I do want to show you for people who are interested in the difference in version 8 is that um, I am able to um, add accessories and limit the view of different product items based on different criteria. So I'm going to show you that. It's a long sentence. Let me show it to you. So we're going to hire Aaron. We're going to do a start date of the 15th. Now the things that are below here, again, it, it'll, it would be related to what your new hire process is. Out of the box, we provide a pretty nice solid you know, computer, mobile device. Uh, selfishly, uh, it, from an IT perspective, lots of those things relate to them. But you can have other fields that are related more to facilities, to performance, to training as well. And this is just a form that's presented based on the category structure. If I go ahead and pick um, this computer type, I can see uh, a description. It's assigned a price to that. And I have a couple of accessories. Again, um, branching out a little bit into some admin, let me take you back over here to where I had shown you the table before. Again, I'm not in an administrator client at all. So let me take you briefly to show you how easy that is into the product catalog. This product catalog can be populated based on imports from an existing catalog that you have. You can create it brand new in here. If we link to an existing catalog, we can schedule those updates uh, nightly or, or at whatever schedule you want that to happen on. We can do that uh, via um, an import of CSV files. We can do a database to database. And we can also do a web API integration. So um, let me pick an example of the one that we are in right now. We picked in that new hire the iMac. And so for those of you uh, interested in what's different in version 8, here's uh, one of the, the really cool kinds of areas. So you're able to go into your product catalog. And now we have something called included departments. So um, if a person is requesting something and they're not in one of these departments, this desktop would not show up as an option for them to pick. That's pretty cool, brand new. Um, the other thing is that um, it used to be that you know, if you had different accessories, either they weren't part of that product, they were a separate thing, um, or they were hard-coded as part of that product. And now you have the ability to, to add different um, accessories. Another cool thing. And that's only $12. And so you can, you can limit the view of different products, and you can add accessories, again, all part of table management. So let me go back over here. Again, I'm in my, I, I, I don't want to confuse you, I'm in my end user view now again. Uh, I showed you where these kinds of things are maintained, um, and you can pick different areas. Now each of the things that you pick here may or may not result in a different um, piece of workflow or a task. So for example, if I get down here and I don't need any software, there isn't going to be a software task generated. If I pick one, there is going to be a software task generated. You can also set up approvals based on lots of different things. Um, if a person is, is a, a VIP, maybe there's an approval that's associated with it. That product catalog can also be modified to be based on role, not just department. Um, so let me go ahead and add this to the cart. So there is a shopping cart concept um, in the tool. For those of you who are back on 6, the shopping cart uh, was not part of that version. So this allows you to add um, different things as you go through here. Now I did a, a new employee setup. If I wanted to go ahead and um, go back and get a, a projector, I could add it to my cart as well. And what happens is when, it, when you submit it, 
it would open up a separate request with its own workflow for each of the things that were in your cart. Okay, so that service catalog, that was specific forms, and then just briefly, um, just some other areas that you can have here. Any of the um, areas that are dashboards or reports that we're going to see when we go into the technician view, all of those things can also be exposed up here at the portal view. So you can provide, um, you know, unlike, again, some other tools, I'm allowed to see uh, a real-time query showing all of the items for my department, regardless of if I open them or not. So um, I can only edit it if I opened it, but I certainly have the right to be able to go out and view different departments. We're seeing this a lot um, for people who have regional managers and divisional managers and people that need to have an understanding operationally of what's happening. Um, they're able to come out here and get these views either by department or by organization or by location whatever that um, piece is. And I'll show you these dashboards when we go down into the technician view. Um, you also have the ability to expose an IT catalog, uh, calendar. And in this case, uh, let me see, I think I have a couple of change requests in here. Um, it's an IT calendar. You can have a different type of calendar. Calendars is a concept in ShareWell where you can create as many calendars as you want and decide what it is that you want to expose. Out of the box, it exposes change requests um, so they have a good idea as a business stakeholder of the different areas that could be impacted um, in their organization over a given period of time. Okay. Um, Bill or, or Kara, were there any questions on the, on the portal? Because I'm going to go now into the technician view. Hey, for time's sake, keep going, Marilyn. I've got a couple of them queued up here already, but we'll get them at the end. All right. Okay, so let's go into the technician view. So, um, oops, excuse me. There it is. Um, one of the things I wanted to briefly show you, so now we're moving off of the end user and we're into technician. So a couple of things about the technician view. Um, I can, I'm going to show you a desktop client because I can edit the dashboards. And that's one of the things I can't do on the browser. It's one of the few things I can't do on the browser. I can edit the dashboard and edit reports from the uh, desktop client. The browser client looks identical to this with just a little difference. I guess that's not fair to say, identical except for. Um, there are a couple of, uh, these are going to be drop downs instead of more of a, a menu here. Um, but it's full functionality. So there's a browser client. This is the desktop client. We showed you the end user portal. And there are also a, there's the mobile client. And then there's also a dashboard viewer and a report viewer. So you have the ability to present these dashboards maybe at a manager's level. They're able to just, if the only thing they want to do is see all of the dashboards and look at operationally what, what's happening, they're able to have a dashboard or report viewer that does not use a license either. So um, briefly, I want to take you over to the Orange client for one second, the admin client. So we had talked about in, um, you know, if you're on a previous version of ShareWell, this is a really, really exciting version to be on because, um, you know, from a, an upgrade perspective, uh, if you don't know about ShareWell, it's the easiest thing to upgrade in the whole world. Um, you know, it's like a, a, a you know, one-hour process to upgrade. It doesn't mess with any of your configurations, and it upgrades you to the latest and greatest foundation of, um, of the application. But one of the things that you miss um, when you were moving from version 5 to version 6 or 6 to 7, when I would do demos of 7, to somebody on six, I'd say, oh, well, if you upgrade, you're going to get all of these great foundational changes to it, you know, from, from being able, you know, for performance issues and, and um, the addition of, of new capabilities. But any application enhancements you were not able to get, well, you could go look at it, you could code it yourself, um, and you might be able to figure out how to blueprint it, but it wasn't very easy. And so starting with version eight, 
um, the new functionality is available via a mergeable, mergeable application. And, and this is huge. Um, so I'm in, the tech, I'm in the admin client, and for those of you not familiar with um, M apps, um, mergeable applications are um, pieces of, of functionality, and in some cases, whole modules that you can uh, apply to your, your ShareWell implementation. And the, uh, it'll tell you if there's any conflicts, although rarely are there any conflicts. Um, and these are free. So um, Bill was talking about, you know, we have incident and change and, and um, release. Well, all of this functionality is available as well at no additional cost. So you're going to see a lot of integration kinds of maps out here. Um, let me, I just found this one myself the other day, this is, uh, and, I, and I loaded it up. This provides functionality where you can uh, loan a configuration item to a customer. So I loaded that up. I'll be able to show that to you here. Um, this is a new functionality in 8.0. For those of you ShareWell users have been, who have been waiting and waiting for this, this gives you a view, and I'll show you a dashboard, of the license usage uh, real time. Um, one of the important ones that's used an awful lot is the um, project tracking module. So I, I, I know that um, we have a couple of our customers on that use this module heavily. Uh, it's, again, a free application to lay on top when you want. So with ShareWell, you're not going to hear, except for asset discovery, nothing else cost extra. So whether you load up this project tracking map, or the JIRA um, integration that's not extra um, at all. So uh, what I have on, on mine is that here are all, here's a lot of the new ones from 8. So we're going to see the orchestration pack for Active Directory. Here's the license usage, JIRA, and here's the Microsoft Exchange. So for those of you who are thinking about upgrading from 7 to 8, 6 to 8, and we have done 6 to 8 and 7 to 8 so far without any issues. We haven't done a 5 yet, just don't have a 5 to do, but um, the upgrades have been very smooth. You're going to be able to go out there and grab these packs and apply them to your implementation. Okay. So uh, we're in the uh, technician view. So we left the end user view. We're in the technician. And this is kind of the show off, holy cow, this is way too much information view. But the purpose of this view is to provide you with a look of the capability of dashboards and, and getting both strategic and operational kinds of views of all of the different tickets in the system. So um, you know, if, you have, uh, if you're running a service desk or uh, you know, a level two, level three organization, you're not going to want all kinds of fluffy charts for people to, to go through. Most people for their service desk and their, and their fulfillment teams go into something that's called My Work. And this provides you the ability to very easily and quickly identify the incidents and requests that are owned by that person. I'm logged in as Henry. Uh, also, any of the changes, tasks, and problems owned by my team. And there's lots of um, visual cues here to help you as well. I can see this one's green because it's already in an acknowledged status and it not, must not be breaching anything. But I can see that there's some, some yellow caution kinds of things here. And this is because they're new. It means they have not been assigned yet. So um, lots of things you can do with these. You can drag and drop them around. Um, just easy to use these. And even beyond easy to use them um, is the ability to um, modify these. So bear with me. I'm going to do this. It will take me about a minute. Um, I'm going to edit this dashboard. And, and Bill likes to say that he knows that something is really easy to modify and configure if Mary Lynn can do it. So this one I can do and, and show you the dashboard side of it. So um, let me pick a, um, uh, let's see, open incidents by department, or where's this other one that I had? Um, average age of incident tickets. Let's take this one over here. I just drag it over, and then I right-clicked on it in widget properties. So you can see that everything, and, and, and here is the other cool thing about ShareWell, and, and it's something that because we didn't do lots of PowerPoints, we didn't cover two in detail, but there's no code here. 
So all of the things that you're going to be modifying are in English um, and easy to follow uh, with prompts on the side saying, okay, here's the criteria one, fill out the criteria, properties, drill down, display. Lots of different widgets here. I can see uh, the examples of the different things I can put on the dashboard just by picking them here. And uh, my very good friend from Envision Radiology taught me the R&D uh, concept. Uh, I love that phrase. It's uh, rip off and duplicate. So uh, if there's something you can't find in the widgets for these dashboards or in the queries that are already defined within the system, then boy, I don't, I'm not sure what you're asking the system to do. So this is just incident management. So you can see that all of these queries have already been defined in the system. And so um, the chances are great that you're going to be able to find something that's close that you just have to modify or tweak a little bit. So the ease of modification for these dashboards is really important. The ability to have these things over here already defined that you can go out and just pick widgets from, and then the queries as well. Um, th these are very, um, you know, pretty, pretty operational kinds of views. Um, there are other dashboards that are available that, um, from an executive perspective, might be something that are interesting. So we, we usually get a pretty good result from people looking at this, you know, more from a, a manager and above view to be able to see, you know, yeah, I see 64 tickets. What does that mean? And you're able to get down to the what does it mean kind of thing and and um, take that data and put it together into um, to graphs um, and any other visual kind of widget that's available. So we have these executive ones already built um, and available to use. Okay. And one other thing on dashboard, and I'll hit the um, this new one um, now for us. Hang on one second here. Let's get us back to the home. So if I go in here, I see this, this is another new feature of, um, of eight, uh, version 8. So this is a, uh, the license usage dashboard that's available here. I probably, uh, if, if you weren't muted, I'd hear a few claps, I think, because this is something that hasn't been easy to get to uh, before today. So this is the, um, the license usage, and then they also have a drill down. Um, that gives you some very detailed information as well. So brand new with um, 8.0, and it's a mergeable app, so it's available regardless of where you come from. Okay, so uh, the next thing that I'd like to hit is around the, um, let me just go in and take a look at, at that request that we had opened. See my different um, requests that I have. This is the one that we opened on the portal for Aaron. Um, and what I want to show you here, because I'm going to take you into an incident, we're going to talk about these fields. But the important part about this service request is the fact that it has already um, generated uh, seven different tasks that are available. So um, these tasks can be made concurrent or sequential. I have a little bit of a view of the task over here on the right side. And you can see that I can make them, I can link them to upstream tasks or downstream tasks. So I can have concurrent or sequential uh, tasking as part of this automation process. These tasks were automatically generated based on the fact that it was linked to this category structure. That when I get to a new employee setup, the following things are uh, put in as tasks. Now, if I didn't order a desktop, there's not going to be a desktop task in here either. We put a, you, you can easily put on the workflow the criteria to, to not have the task created if it's blank. So I wanted just to show you the, um, the workflow here in the request, but what I'd like to do next is go in and create a new incident and just show you some of the other new features. So uh, for those of you not familiar, again, with ShareWell, here is just a sampling of all of the different things that are in here. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go in and create a new incident. 
Um, quickly, you can get to a ticket by putting it up here in the quick search. Over here on the left is something that's called a task pane. Um, and this shows things that are very handy to the service desk. We worked with a client on a demo the other day, and they said the most important thing for them is for their service desk to have everything they need handy um, and, and within a, a quick click. And so uh, well, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but one of them is in this taskbar to be able to put things called one steps. And so specific forms is one of the core, core key cool features of ShareWell because it presents um, actionable fields. One steps is really the workhorse of the tool. So this allows you to string together different commands um, and, and one step, it's one click. So in this case, if I'm in an incident and I click on create problem, it's gonna take all of the fields that are in the incident, go over and do an open on the problem and change this incident status to pending. So there are several different um, one steps that are already part of uh, the out of box and then there are other ones that you can create very easily um, by just stringing the different commands together and making it available to your service desk. You can see some of the new ones have also been added out here and you can also get, them, get to them up here in the incident action. BombGuard integration is a really um, good piece and, and they do cost that, if you want that product, that does cost extra. But the ability to start chat, chat sessions and take remote control um, and all of that information is captured as part of the ticket uh, is something that we're seeing as being really valuable to a lot of our customers. So that's the task bar, that's about quick steps, quick one steps. And here is our incident ticket. So I'm going to, in this case, say uh, email not launching. And let me copy and paste that to cheat. We get um, the, the customer information from uh, Act and Active Directory integration. Any place in the tool that you see a little arrow, like this blue arrow, here's another one over here, you can launch over to the source record. So in this case, it's the employee record. Um, and if you wanted to get some additional information and not clutter up your ticket with, with information, they just can go look at what the location is. You can quickly get to the source record as well. As I started populating this ticket, cool things started happening down below in some of the, the uh, different tabs that we have. Um, I can see that because I put Tracy in here, I automatically um, are, am being shown 30, the, all of the open tickets for Tracy, which from a service desk perspective is really important. I mean, in fact, a lot of the tickets that maybe somebody is calling in about are really just updates to current tickets that are open. I also see last 30 days um, view as well. Um, SLA, I'll just hit that briefly. I have the ability out of box to have three different levels of SLA, customer, service, and configuration item. Uh, if two of these are in play at the same time, the system will pick the one with the shortest resolution time. Nothing's in there yet because I don't have a service or uh, configuration item yet. Here is that same category structure, the services category, subcategory that you saw out on the portal. Uh, it's the same one in here as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and say it was an email issue and a desktop client. And I can see now, again, more information popping up below, showing me um, from that service and category, other tickets that had that same categorization structure that are open in the environment. In case I have a, um, you know, a, a start of an outage or something happening in the organization. Now notice here it just says additional details. I'm going to go ahead and submit an incident. And here is that specific form that I talked about before. And this is available to your technicians as well. And the nice thing about this is you can take action on these and you can show only part of these that you want, like, like if, you're, if you're presenting this to your end user, they're just gonna sort of laugh at you. 
But if you have some specific questions that you want your end user to answer and then a bunch of other questions that you want your technician to answer, you can have um, different things shown in the portal than on the technician view. I'm going to go ahead and uh, identify a priority for this. If I identify a priority one, uh, I can make this a major incident. Major incident just brought up this linked incident tab here, and I have the ability to link other, if it's an outage, say, um, declare this the lead ticket, add additional linked tickets, and they become part of the workflow. When the incident is resolved, the, LinkedIn, the major incident is resolved, it will propagate the resolution information down to the link tickets, then uh, an email notification will go out to the end user with that information as part of it. I have my knowledge over here, always part of it. I can search knowledge by the categorization structure, or I can search knowledge by uh, just typing in here. Um, what comes up are either the um, knowledge that is Part of the searches, so for example, here I have it searching incidents, but here are my cleaned up knowledge articles as well. If I click into one of them, I can see some information about it. Now, we're not going to have time to get into the workflow of knowledge management, but you can see it here. It starts as new, goes through draft, submitted, review, approval, published. So, and you can decide what level of approvals have to happen as part of that workflow. You can see it's got a, a rich text editor here, uh, so you can make it look as nice as you want. You can put um, screenshots, links, and you can have attachments as part of the, um, the knowledge article. Okay, if I use this solution, it'll come back over. It links that knowledge article to the incident as well, and it's gonna save that resolution information for when I close the ticket. I know I'm running out of time, so I wanted to show you quickly, you have the ability to post to JIRA. If this is an incident that net then needs to open up um, something over on a project in JIRA, you're able to do it from here. Uh, Active Directory, um, oh actually I get even more options. Let me put in a configuration item. Here I see that Tracy is linked to this workstation and I've now linked her as, as this as part of the ticket. So. Um, and for email, I can have automation that will go out and enable a mailbox and all of these different things that you can see here. This was never available prior to this version and it's something that all of the clients have been clamoring for. So this is gonna enable you to do a lot more action from within a ticket. We're not having to go out to another tool to do this. Now it's gonna error out, um, but I do wanna show you what it does do. Everything that uh, is done within the ticket becomes part of the journal entries. So if I change a field, it becomes a journal entry. And for those of you uh, new to version eight, um, this is a new journal type called integrations audit. And it keeps track of what, uh, whether it was successful or not, um, and the details of the parameters and the um, commands that were run. And this automation is for JIRA, Active Directory, and for Microsoft Exchange. Very excited about those. Okay, Marianne, I'm gonna take a breath here. Minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we can take some questions too, Bill. Yeah, are, are you, you about wrapped up? Well, I, you know I could go on forever, but I would say yes for this part. Yeah, okay, because we, we do have a number of questions. So, okay. so some of the folks, some folks have asked questions. I've been waiting till the end. Some folks who had very specific ones, maybe about their instance, we've tried to answer those. Uh, directly in the chat portal. Um, so one of the questions we have is um, is in the portal review. Uh, I'm sorry, in the portal view, on the right hand side there was a comment section. Can some comments be set as private while other comments set as public, visible to the customer? Absolutely. So that was when I went into that ticket and looked at the ticket and saw the comments that were going back and forth. Right. Um, so let me sh let me pull that up really quickly here, and it was I think was it Bill Bill Ewoks here these comments here. Um, so if I go into that ticket 102297,
So there can be lots of things. So portal comments is one way um, that you can do that. And, and you can, if you're going to put it into the portal comments tab, these are always visible. But because it says portal comment, you're going to be sending this specifically to that person. But notice if I'm going to add a new note here, and it's going to say, uh, worked with person hard to get along with. <laughs> I'm not talking about you, Bill. Um, I can unclick visible in customer portal. And so this would not be shown up on the portal. But others, if it said visible in portal, it would. So hopefully that answers the question. Yep, I think it did. So I got a couple more if we can try to get through them. Um, going through the new employee setup, it looked like Mary Lim was using more than one form and scrolling. Can forms be separated into separate tabs instead of instead so scrolling can be limited? Doing so would help keyboard navigation. Yeah, it sure would. And I do not know the answer to that question. So I have uh, some of my team on. If you can answer this in 30 seconds, answer it. Uh, with yes or no. If not, we'll do a follow-up on this. Hey, Mary Lynn, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So, so the answer is yes. So if you look on the right-hand side, you have that additional information. You could have just that section uh, there if you wanted to. Well, I think the question is that right now, okay, so I, what I'm thinking is that they are thinking, well, maybe they want a tab called computer, a tab called software, a tab called something. So they aren't having to scroll down through here. I got you. Okay, because that's one form. That's not multiple forms. Yes. So, so could they be separate forms that are viewed here on the portal? Actually. I got you. Uh, that I don't know the answer of right on top of my head. Okay, perfect. We, we will follow up with that one, Bill. Yeah, I think part of it, though, is, is obviously it's manageable based on a member of the specific form. So what you're choosing adds or, or takes away from the size of that form as well. So by the... I think by the way we design the forms and the questions we ask, we certainly can manage that. Um, I have a question that says, please help recommend the level of testing needed with an upgrade. I know it's probably a fairly complex one, but maybe we can get some high level tips. Oh boy, you know, hopefully if you have any of the UAT scripts that you had when you first put this up, it would be to run through those again. Um, the, the upgrade is going to tell you if there's any conflicts. Um, and again, to my team briefly, have we, what kinds of areas would you recommend somebody better, like, oops, but make sure you check this piece out while you're doing it. Any, um, any obvious gotchas or places to check? Uh, I mean, as long as there hasn't been any coding, you know, you know we share, well, we, you know, there should not be, really be a need for adding code, but if there was a need at one point, uh, that's definitely a spot, but in general, Upgrades uh, are, are, are safe with, with ShareWell and, and not too many issues there. So that actually brings up a, a, a perfect segue to the next question I have, and which is actually the last one. After that, we can open up the lines if someone wants to ask a question uh, via the phone. But the, the last written question I had was, um, did your example of a AMP Hub portal require web, pro web programming to create? No. Not at all. And hey, Kara, are you there? Yep, I'm here. Okay, pop in there, girl. Yeah, um, this was done within the ShareWell um, designer that they have. So it's so no, really... No, no HTML, right, Kara? No HTML. It's really quite simple. I mocked it up in Photoshop first, saved all my images, imported them into ShareWell, and I really took advantage of using the shapes that are in there and layering and I try to make sure everything is text so if a client decides they want a button to say something else it's very simple for them to go in and change the text. Okay great so Kara I mean, we, we do have just a few more minutes I know we want to bring up a, our final poll question. Um, Marilyn's actually showing an example here's, a, here's one of our clients who's given us permission to use their portal Here's a couple of the pages that we created specifically for their ShareWell portal. So again, looks totally different from version 8 or 7, 6, or 5 for that matter. Looks totally different from the AMP Hub. Very much branded for this customer presenting specific information that's important to them. Uh, so again, and 
also using the tools within inside, inside ShareWell, no custom HTML, no coding. Um, and then, Kara, if we can bring up the the poll question again real quick. There you go. So hopefully right now on your screen you should see uh, what topic would you like to see cover in an upcoming webinar. We have a few choices we've put out there. If any of those are of interest, please feel free to vote on those, and we'll take those into consideration as we we work through the next one. Obviously, we, we didn't get to cover a ton in, in an hour time frame uh, with, with ShareWell. We can dig into some of these modules um, uh, in, in greater depth, as the PowerPoint indicated, if somebody wanted to reach out uh, to see a deeper dive on any of these components. would love to be able to do that with you. We're getting great response, I can tell you right now, on the voting for, uh, for the different topics. Uh, so integration capabilities and new portal design seem to be the hot ones right now. So if that's not one of yours, vote, vote for your category now. Um, other than that, thank you very much. If we, Hopefully, hopefully you got to see some pieces of version 8 that were helpful, whether you're an existing user or uh, new to ShareWell. And if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to uh, M. Lawrence or B. Sheridan at advanced, uh, ampemail.com and uh, be happy to follow up with you and answer any other questions you may have.